Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One King, one Huskies. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches, back to the days of the gold rush, with Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Fellas and girls, listen. Today's the day. Yes, in just a few minutes, you're going to get in on the surprise offer of a lifetime. It's thrilling. It's terrific. It's new. It's different. It's something you'll want to have. No, it flashes red. No, it flashes green. It's out of this world for secret codes and messages. It's not on sale in stores anywhere. You've never seen anything just like it. So listen to this. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice the keen-tasting, ready-to-serve breakfast cereal shot from guns are offering every one of you listeners a chance to get one. And what is it? Just stand by. Have pencil and paper handy. Keep listening for full details in just a few minutes. Midwinter winds lash through the main street of Dawson and beat at Dave Carson, publisher of the newspaper, as he made his way to Arnold Blenheim's bank. The clerk, a man named Slade, stepped up to greet the publisher. Well, well, Mr. Carson. I declare it takes more than a blizzard to keep you from carrying on your business. Hello, Slade. Weigh up this gold and put it to my account. Gladly. Oh, by the way, Mr. Blenheim hoped you'd be in today. Why do you hope that? I don't owe his bank any money. <laughs> oh, no, of course not. But uh, he'd like to see you. Well, well, uh, just the man I want to see you. How are you, Carson? How is everything in the newspaper? First rate. I'll go and weigh up this gold. Yeah, yeah. Carson, I've just learned a few things in which your newspaper might be interested in. Yeah? You're familiar with a young engineer named John Bevan. What about him? He uh, came here several months ago with his attractive wife and... An elderly gentleman, uh, his father, I think. Since then, a number of heavy shipments of equipment uh, packed in wooden cases have been unloaded here at Dawson. I might add that it's expensive equipment. I happen to know because the payments have been handled through my bank. Uh, I know he's received a lot of heavy equipment. What about it? Well, uh, Bevan is supposed to be prospecting up near Gopher Rapids. Now, mind you, I said supposed to be. He's not? The uh, equipment that Bevan has bought and paid for is not mining equipment. No? No. It's uh, electrical equipment. Heavy iron castings, wire, magnets, things of that sort, and machines that have been shipped from a place in Orange, New Jersey... Some fellow there by the name of Edison. Why are you telling me all this, Blenheim? You want me to publish it in my newspaper? No, no, no. But, uh, Carson, something is going on at the Bevan place. I happen to know the house he's built near the rapids is much larger than he needs. That, uh, that man is up to something. And uh, I've learned that John Bevan is an engineer from the East who studied electricity. His uh, father helped build the telegraph. He's a scientist. And I tell you, Carson, those Bevins will bear investigation. Hmm, maybe so. If uh, I were you, I'd send a man up to go for Rapids to learn what they're up to. I'll think about it. Here you are, Mr. Carson. Here's your slip. I've credited $314 to your account. Oh, thanks, Slade. Now I've got to get back to my office. You uh, think over what I suggest. Yeah, I'll think it over. Uh, he'll 
do it. Do what, Mr. Blenheim? Send one of his newspaper men up to go for rapids to investigate the barons. To that slate is where you come in. What? Get a couple of men to help you. Be ready to move if Carson sends out a representative. What do you want me to do? Get the reporter before he gets to Bevan's house. Have him held while you take his credentials and go in his place. Find out all you can about the Bevan's project. Have you any idea what he's doing? Yes. He's trying to harness the water power of the rapids, make it run what is known as a dynamo to generate electricity. Indeed, sir. He has a dream of sending electricity here to Dawson and using it to light the buildings. I, uh, I must know whether or not Bevan is going to be successful. If not, I'll have no further concern. But if he is, <laughs> I want a finger in the pie. In fact, uh, I want the pie. Slade lined up two men who were willing to do anything for money and held himself in readiness. Meanwhile, Dave Carson considered the banker's suggestion. The more he thought about it, the more he became interested in the activities at Gopher Rabbits. Randy, this suggestion comes from Blenheim. But it's good in spite of that. Boss, I never heard of anything good in connection with Blenheim. Uh, you like this one. You're going north to go for rapids. That's two days on snowshoes if the weather isn't too bad. Two days going, two days coming, three days there. Well, you should be back here in a week. Mm -hmm. I'll provide you with identification papers. And I think you'll find John Bevan willing to talk. See how he's coming on his plans to light the town of Dawson with electricity. What? Is that what he's doing? Hopes to. He confided in me when he first came up here, but asked me to keep quiet until he saw how things would work out. He knows he can trust me. That's why I think he'll give you the facts true. Get your gear together and be ready to leave here tomorrow morning. Bright and early. Randy set out on schedule early in the morning and made good time that day and the next. Late afternoon found him pushing through the darkness following the bank of Gopher River on the last few miles of his journey. Slade, the bank clerk, was waiting behind the big rock on the trail ahead. And with him were two hard-faced men. There he comes, Greed. That's the man. You, uh, you want me and Jake to waylay him and rob him, is that it? Yes. Tie him up and take him to that shack nearby. Clean out his pockets. You can have the cash, but bring me his credentials. How savvy. He's nearly here. Step out and meet him. We oui, come on, you yes, sure. All right, mister. Huh? Hi, Sam. Get your hands up. You're covered. What's your game? We want you. <laughs> this is the time you've made a mistake. I've got nothing worth stealing. We'll be the judge of that. Cover him, Breed. I'll clean out his pockets. Maybe you're yeah. expecting someone else. Yeah. I'm Randy Cole, representing the Dawson Herald. Yeah, here's a wallet. There's no cash in it, just a couple of letters. Oh, still. I have a hundred dollars in gold in my belt, and that's all I have. There's a watch. That watch was my father's. You can't have it. Uh-huh. Heavy watch, too. Give it to me. Steady. Give me that watch, I tell you. You can have my cash, but that's all. Oh, fight me, will you? Why, I'll you... I'll show you. Oh, oh. get him. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that did it, you. you. You shot him. Sure I shoot him. You saw him hit Jake. He blamed me and busted my jaw. Glad you got him, Breed. He asked for it. See how hard he's hit. We've got to take care of it. He don't need no can for. He's dead. Breed, you gun-crazy fool. Now we are in trouble. Now we've got a murder on our hands. I told you I didn't want you to hurt him. I told you there was to be no gunplay. Listen, play. Slade, what you told us and what's done are two different things. You wanted the letters he was carrying, didn't you? Well, here they are in the wallet. Now take them. We, we, we can't leave him here in, in the snow. We won't leave him here in the snow. No need for that. We'll go for a river close by. Yeah, and it's running full, too, Breed. Sure. We just toss him over the bank and the stream will wash him away. Chances are he'll never be found. Yeah, grab his feet. No, 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 wait. What's the matter, Slade? Wait until I'm away from here. I, I'll i take the wallet and go on to the Bevan place. When I'm gone, you two uh, get rid of that. <laughs> Yellow back. Be careful what you say. Remember, I'm the one who's paying you. Speaking of that pay, when do we get it? You wait in that shack you spoke of. The one 
Where you were going to... We were going to hold a newspaper man. I'll join you there after I've spent a few days with Bevan and his father. Dave Carson waited impatiently for the return of his representative with the story of the activities at Gopher Rapids. The allotted week had gone by in two days more, but Randy had not returned. On the third day, the publisher was pacing the floor uneasily when the door opened. Sergeant Preston, am I glad to see you. And King. Hello, Carson. Mm. Did you just get into town? Yes. Oh, sit down, Sergeant. Thanks. You've come at the right time. Oh, what's wrong? Sergeant, what do you know about John Bevan up at Gopher Rapids? Not a great deal. He's doing something with electricity. Yes. Then you knew it. Why, yes, I did. Well, the point is just this, Preston. I have a fine young man working for me, a chap named Randy Cole. I met him last time I was through here. Oh, that's right, so you did. Well, he went up to Gopher Rapids to see what he could learn about the Bevan's activities. He was due back here three or four days ago. I haven't heard from him. I have a feeling that something's happened to Randy. I'm going up that way. I'll look in on Bevan. I wish you would. I'm wondering if maybe Randy learned things Bevan didn't want known. Mm. Bevan is playing for big stakes, Sergeant. Almost anything might have happened to Randy. I have some things to do here in town. It'll take a couple of hours... And King and I will start out for Gopher Rapids. It was supper time, but Sergeant Preston didn't pause. He pushed on, hoping to reach the Bevan home in time for the evening meal. He was striding along the bank of Gopher River when suddenly King stopped. What's matter with you, King? The big dog had caught the scent of death close by. He looked at his master, then barked once more and bounded to the left of the trail, where a steep bank dropped sharply to the edge of Gopher River. Sergeant Preston watched his dog curiously. He's caught the scent of something. Then in a moment, King was back, whining and tugging at his master's clothing. Steady there, boy. You found something? King had found something, and he thought the Mountie should see it. All right, King. You didn't tear my clothes off. I'll go with you. Down the bank, eh? The snow's deep here. The old river's running fast. It keeps going like this all winter. I... What? King was near the water's edge, pawing at something dark that had been partially covered by snow. Then the Northwest Mountie was beside his dog. A man. Dead. Shot. The cold moonlight was brilliant. It revealed a face that was familiar. Randy. King, it's Randy Cole. He's been murdered. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Now then, fellas and girls, here it comes. Here comes the hottest news since gold was discovered in the Yukon. Right now, you're hearing one of the keenest offers ever. It's something made especially for you. It's the new official challenge of the Yukon secret two-way signal flashlight. Yes, today you can send for your two-way signal flashlight that flashes red and green. Listen to that. This is no ordinary flashlight. It's special. It's new. It's different. It's a real flashlight that flashes red and that flashes green. Think of it. With a simple flick of your finger, you can send out beams of red light or beams of green light. Did you ever hear of anything like it for sending or receiving secret codes and messages? Why, it works much like blinker signal guns used by the Army and Navy. Yes, listen. This is a secret two-way signaling flashlight. It has a special plastic directional signal barrel. That means you cannot see the red or green rays except from directly in front. That's to prevent others from detecting your secret signal flashes except the person at whom they're aimed. Man, oh man, what fun you'll have. Say, you can make up your own code to signal friends. For instance, one green flash and one red flash might mean come at once. Two red flashes might mean danger. Stay back. And listen, this two-way signal flashlight is handy pocket size. It's less than four inches long. Imagine, you can carry it concealed in your pocket anywhere without anyone being the wiser. And it's real keen looking, too. Your official new Challenge of the Yukon signal flashlight is shiny black. And it has Sergeant Preston's name in his own handwriting across the side. What's more, this special signal flashlight comes complete with standard replaceable electric bulb and battery. Send for yours today. Send now for your secret signal flashlight. The amazing kind of flashlight that's two-way. That sends out beams of red light or beams of green light. All you do is send 25 cents in coin. That's all. Just 25 cents and one box top 
from a package of delicious Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Print your name and address and send at once to Flashlight, Chicago 50, Illinois. This official two-way signal flashlight is not on sale in stores anywhere. To get yours, remember, send only 25 cents and one box top from Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. The swell-tasting breakfast cereals shot from guns. Hurry, be first to get yours. Don't delay, address your letter today to... Flashlight, Chicago 50, Illinois. I'll repeat, that's Flashlight, Chicago 50, Illinois. Now to continue our story. After King had found the body of the murdered newspaper man... Sergeant Preston hurried over the last few miles to the home of John Bevan and his wife and father, where he was warmly greeted. Come on in, Sergeant. You too, King. Thanks, John. Dad, you remember Sergeant Preston. Indeed I do. Yes, sir, indeed I do. Glad to see you again, Dr. Bevan. You too, Margie. I declare we should really have a party tonight. It's an occasion to celebrate. Oh, close that door, John. Don't let the cold in. I've, uh... Come through some deep snow. I'm sorry to track up your floor like this. Oh, don't worry about that, Sergeant. You uh, might at least make a comment, Sergeant Preston. Comment? <laughs> he hasn't noticed it, Mark. <laughs> and I thought the Mounties had sharp eyes. Oh, the light. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered how long it would take. You. An electric light. The first one in the Yukon Territory. Congratulations, John. Oh, Dad's the one to congratulate. He did all the brain work. Oh, oh now, now. Father, you must show Sergeant Preston your workshop. Oh, yes, indeed. Here in the house? Yes, you're standing right beneath it. Beneath it? Yes. You see, when we built this house, we made her a few feet higher than usual. Put a ceiling over this room and the one in back. Right there's a ladder leading up to a hole in the ceiling. My workshop's up above under the eaves. I see. Got a good solid floor there to support my machinery and equipment. Makes a first-rate place to work. It's snug and it's warm. Well, you've been successful. Well, we can operate this one lamp. Now it's a case of increasing the output. We're using the light tonight for the first time. I'm sorry. But why? This should be an occasion to celebrate. I'm sorry I have to bring bad news. I found a dead man on the trail. What? It was a newspaper man in Dawson. His name was Randy Cole. Randy Cole? Oh, but that's impossible. Impossible? Oh, Cole's right here. He's been with us about a week. Man I found's been dead about that long. You must have made a mistake, Sergeant. What made you think it was Randy Cole? I recognized him, Doctor. What makes you think Randy Cole's here with you? Oh, his credentials. He showed them to us to identify himself. We've been telling him all about the electric plant we've set up here and our plans for expansion. He promised to help us. Yes. You, you see, we plan to form a company and issue stock. I'll talk to this man who calls himself Cole. Where is he? Oh, he's in a room at the rear, one that has a door in the outside so that he can come and go as he wants to with, without going through the rest of the house. Oh. Uh, he went to take a nap a few minutes ago. Uh, Cole? Hey, Cole, there's someone here to see you. I'll go in. He doesn't answer. Maybe he's asleep. Ooh, that wind. The outer door is open. Oh, Cole's not here. Looks as if he left in a hurry. Didn't even take time to close the door. You going after him? I am. He can follow his trail all right, even though the wind does fill in his footprints. But before I go after him, I'd like to borrow your sled and dog team to bring in the body of the other man. Oh, you're welcome to anything we have. Thanks, John. I'll be back here in an hour. Then King and I will go after the man who called himself Cole... I'll see what he knows about the murder of Randy. During the week that Slade had lived with the Bevan family, gathering information about their plans, he had gone at least once each day to a nearby cabin where the killers waited. But now he traveled faster than ever before. He was tired and breathless when he came out of the windy darkness. Reed, uh, take... We've got to work fast. What's the trouble? What's gone wrong? It's a Mountie. He's at the Bevan place. No? Yes. He found and recognized Cole. He did? I thought the body'd be carried downstream. Well, it wasn't. The Mountie knows I'm an imposter. How'd you get away? By the skin of my teeth. I had a room at the back of the house. I could hear what was going on. I skinned out before the Mountie got around to questioning me. Come on, boys. We've got to get back there. For what? To get the Mountie, of course. Not so fast, Slade. Mounties come a lot higher than newspaper men. 
Before we move, we better talk terms. Terms? Why, you fool. He'll get that Mountie or he'll get you. We can maybe get away if we start now and keep moving. But you're not in such a good position. The Bevins know you. They can describe you. Chances are the Mountie will recognize you as the bank clerk when he hears the description. Oh, all right. All right, boys, I'll pay. We're in this up to our necks, and we'll have to get out. We'll have to get more than the money. There's Bevan and his wife and his father to consider. Now, sit down and get your breath. We'll talk this over. John's father became restless, waiting for the sergeant to return. Presently, he said, John, I'm going up to the loft. Do some work on my calculations. Oh, all right, Dad. Shall we call you when Sergeant Preston returns? No, oh, Marge, I'll see him coming. I'll watch for him through that air vent. Uh, be careful the ladder. Yes, yes, sir, of course. John, what do you make of that man who came here calling himself Cole? Uh, I don't know who he is, Marge. But obviously he was after information, and I don't like it. Right now it would be easy for someone with money to step in and take over after all our work. Mm. Hey there, down below, John. Uh, yes, Dad. Someone's coming, but it's not Sergeant Preston. Well, uh, who is it? I can see two men heading towards the front door. One of them is walking like that imposter. Two men? They're almost to the door. Uh, I'll open it. You stay here, Marge. All right. Well, Mr. Uh, Cole. Hello, John. All right, mister, get him up. Oh, God. What's the idea? Where's the Mountie? He's not here, but he was... Marge. Oh, dear. Not here, eh? It, it slipped out. Uh, he'll be back. And when he comes, he'll have some questions to ask about a murder. And he'll also want to know why you called yourself Cole. And how you got the credentials you showed us. Oh, he will, eh? Well, maybe I won't be answering his questions. Where's the old man? I'm up here, you uh, murderer. Uh, the loft. I get him. Oh! You can't get me by shooting through the floor, but I can get you. I can see you through the cracks. Now throw down that gun. Slate, is that true? Yes, I, I guess so. There's wide cracks in the floor of that loft. Do as I said. I'm not fooling. Oh, so your name is Slade, huh? Drop that gun in a hurry. Don't do it, Bree. Oh, John, there's another man in the back room. I get you covered. Bevan, you can hear me, but you can't see me. I came through the back door and I got your son and his wife covered. You start any shooting and you can guess what'll happen to him. That's the ticker take. Now who's got the upper hand? Why, you only it. Don't try another move like that or I'll let you have it. Let him have it anyway. We've got to get rid of all of them. And that Mountie, too, when he gets back. All right. Wait a minute, Jake. I handle this. You two go on to that back room. Now, wait a minute. Go ahead, John. You and Marge do as he says. These crooks have already killed Randy Cole. They'll kill again to save their worthless tights. That's good advice, Bevan. You heard it, John. Go on. You and Marge get back there. Come on, honey. We'll follow Dad's advice. Get moving. What are we going to do about that old goat overhead, Breed? We've got to get him down from there. Leave that to me. First, we've got to get rid of that Mountie, and he'll be back here soon. Yeah. You stand right here at the door while I go into the back room with these two. Keep an eye on that hole in the ceiling and be sure old Bevan don't come down. All right. What are your plans, Breed? We keep the girl here in this room. You can stay here and hold a gun on her. I'll take her husband to the front of the house to let the Mountie in. Now, watch yourself. I've heard about Preston. He travels with a dog that's mighty dangerous. You shoot the Mountie, you'll have to get the dog and get him fast. Yeah, that's why young Bevan is going to let Preston into the house. Once he's inside, we'll get the drop on him, take his gun and get the dog. If the old man makes any trouble from the loft... Well, just put a bullet right between this girl's eyes. Why, you shut up! John! You heard the plan, Bevan. Now, come on. We'll go and wait for Sergeant Preston. Minutes dragged for the group waiting near the front door. John was tortured with thoughts of Sergeant Preston's certain death, which would unquestionably be followed by the cold-blooded murder of his wife, his father, and himself. Breed and Slade sat close by, six guns in our hands, waiting... There was silence in the loft, and it was equally silent beyond the closed door at the back room where Jake was holding a gun on Margie. Makes me uneasy to think of old Bevan up in that loft. He can probably watch us through the holes in the floor. That's right, Slade. I'm watching you. You better come down from there. Come up and get me. You heard what Breed said, Bevan. Come down. Come down or I'll tell Jake to shoot Margie. You won't do that, Slade. It wasn't for Margie you couldn't threaten John into keeping silent when Preston comes. He shot a warning and so would I. Yeah, I'll leave him up there, Slade. He don't dare shoot us. In fact, I'm not sure he's even got a gun. The back hey, room. It's Jake. And Sergeant Preston. Jake. Go away, go away. 
There he is. He came in the back way. I get him. Who else wants gunplay? Wait, wait. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. Up it, Slade. Pick up the gun, John. Right, While you're at it, pick up the one breed dropped. My arm. You you bust my arm. Yeah, it's a good thing I didn't have a gun up there in the loft right up busted your head. King's been guarding Jake. I'll go get him. John. Oh, John, are you all right? Yes, Marge. And you? I'm all right. Sergeant Preston and Hello. King came through the back right, door so I'm suddenly Jake John didn't know what happened. Straight ahead, Jake. Join your friends. All three of you are under arrest in the name of the Queen for the murder of Randy Cole. No, no, I didn't do it. You can't hold me for that. You hired us, you yellow leaver. Get back there. You thought you were so smart, Breed. You didn't figure on Preston coming through the back door and getting Jake first. There's always something crooks like you don't figure on. Seems like every criminal's got a blind spot. Sergeant Preston, wait till I tell you about these crooks. They were planning to kill you and King. I know all about it, John. I told him about the trap. That's why he and King went around the back door to get Jake first. You told him, Dad. But how? They used the telegraph code to send me a message in the dark. Yes, so. While I was up in the loft, I took a small electric light bulb. It was wired up to those dry cell batteries I'd been working on. I watched through the air vent. When I saw the sergeant coming, I flashed the light on and off and told him what was going on here. Your flashing light was a good idea, Doctor. Something of that sort would be of great value to the law in a country like this. We could send messages through the long night. You have one, Sergeant. I'll fix up some batteries and a small bulb for you. Well, Doctor, if you could make it small enough to carry in my pocket a very small bulb and very small batteries held together in a tube... Yes, with a button you could push to uh, turn the light on and off. Right. (laughs) And I can fix it so it signals in different colors. A red signal for danger, perhaps, and a green one to mean all's well. (laughs) Yes, indeed, I'll fix a light for you. You just draw a sketch of what you want. I'll do that, Dr. Bevan. Just as soon as I've turned in these three crooks for trial. And we have another job. That's right, boy. A big job. We must learn why Slade came here to investigate this project. We must find out who was behind him. We have a lot to do before this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. Fellas and girls, remember, it's first come, first serve. Yes, hurry. Be first in your gang to get your amazing new secret two-way signal flashlight. That's the special new pocket-sized flashlight that's two-way, that sends out beams of red light or beams of green light. Tell your best friends to order one, too. This amazing signal flashlight that flashes either red or green can't be beat for secret codes and messages among your own particular gang. So hurry. Simply put 25 cents in coin in an envelope. Along with the 25 cents, enclose one box top from a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. And your own name and address. Send tonight to Flashlight, Chicago 50, Illinois. Here's that address again. Flashlight, Chicago 50, Illinois. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendo, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the signal in green. The constable and I saw the signal gleaming like an emerald in the darkness of a cave. We had to go there, even though we knew our approach might mean the death of Margie Bevan. This was one of our most critical situations. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. Till then, this is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.